One sure sign of fall in the eastern United States is the appearance of potted mums at every garden center, roadside farm market, and big box store. Buying these familiar, colorful, and all too often disposable potted plants has become a tradition in many areas. But is there a better, more ecologically sound choice? You bet there is. Our native fall blooming asters in the genus Symphiotrichum, which includes species such as New England aster and Calico aster, have similarly shaped flowers to mums, bloom at the same time of year, and many species can be grown in containers. Although garden mums are perennial and will survive and grow if planted in the ground, they are native to China and require a bit of care to keep them growing and blooming well. Our native fall asters in comparison are superbly adapted to their native environment and once established are fairly bulletproof, especially if you have stock from a local ecotype. They can easily be divided when they spread to form a clump or their seeds can be collected in the late fall and winter and spread in other areas. Spreading native aster seed is a super easy way to increase the native aster numbers in your pollinator gardens. If fall asters are grown in a container to use as an outdoor decoration, they can be planted in the ground anytime before they go fully dormant. There are a bunch of native fall asters and figuring out which species will do best in your location can be tricky. If you would like me to make a video or videos, I might have to break them up by flower color. Doing a deep dive into the most commonly available native fall asters let me know down in the comments. Butterflies and bees will visit garden mums, and they do provide some pollen and nectar for pollinators. But that is where their pollinator value ends. The native fall asters in comparison feed adult butterflies, but are also keystone host plants and provide food for up to 100 species of butterfly and moth caterpillars, including those of the pearl crescent butterfly. Even if they didn't have beautiful fall blooms, they would be worth having in the pollinator garden just for the number of caterpillars that feed on them which in turn draw a variety of birds and predatory insects. If you find the fall asters as irresistible as a hungry caterpillar does, inch on over and take a chomp out of that like button. The fall asters aren't just important for caterpillars. They also draw honeybees and a huge variety of native bees. This includes 33 species of pollen specialist bees, mostly in the genera Andrina and Melissoides, that require specific pollens to raise their young. We as pollinator habitat managers sometimes get a little tunnel visioned about caterpillar host plants, but providing for the pollen specialist native bees is equally important and the fall asters are vital for many of them. If there is one drawback to the fall asters, it is purely aesthetic. They don't come in the rainbow of colors garden mums do. Most fall asters will be shades of blue, purple, and white. I am willing to give up some colors, and I'm sure many of you watching are also. For a plant that is adapted to my area and provides for a ton of pollinator species both with nectar and pollen and as a host plant. If you want more color in your fall pollinator garden, you can always pair the fall asters with some of our other fall blooming natives. A few of which you can learn about in this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.